Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sin and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak of God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within. So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have not received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are, spirit, uh, those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and 
they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
morning. morning. Have a seat. You know, I'm a walker, and thanks to modern medicine, I continue to walk uh, without pain. And I walk to the beach. You all know that, right? I'm a beach walker. And uh, every once in a while on the beach, I'll meet people. Right, Brian? Okay. Right, Tracy? And I, I find it wonderful to share that time down at what is known as Gillis's Jetty, this ugly, tormented piece of stone and iron that continues to stand forth against the pounding surf year after year. I don't know how long it's been there. Uh, maybe Tracy knows. <laughs> but uh, it's become a place of visioning for me. Uh, the sun strikes Gillis in a way, day to day, season to season, tide to tide, high surf, low surf, that reminds me that I am in the Cathedral of the Pacific. And the little bench, that hard concrete bench, is my pew. And it's been my other church gathering spot most of my life since we moved here. And I want to talk to you about what it means to be lit and what it means to be salty. Because that's what you are. That's what you've been. That's what this place has been. That's what this community is all about. It's about being lit and salty. Bringing flavors out in our community that wouldn't have been brought out without our presence. This is the city built on a hill, just as the cross of Christ was the light of the world built on Golgotha. You are the light of the world as a community. And Jesus reminds us of that today, having already gone through last week's readings, right? The Beatitudes. Just to know what it means to be lit, to be poor in spirit. If you are poor in spirit, you want more spirit. If you think you've got all the answers, how do you be poor? If you're poor in spirit, it means you've poured out your spirit in living your lives. And when you do that, more of the spirit comes to you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. They're radiant. They light up the world, and so does this community. Blessed are those who mourn. Boy, have we seen some mourning here. I learned to mourn here. I saw some of my older disciples ahead of me come and go, but their lives have meant so much to me over time. They taught me how to grieve loss. And when my father and my mother died and when my wife died, I knew how to mourn. And I knew the comfort that comes from mourning. Blessed are the meek, the radiant meek. Those will inherit the earth because they are of the earth. They understand where we come from. You are earth, and to earth you shall be returned. So it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for right relationships with others. Not just others like us, but others who are very different from us. To live any other way is to live contrary to being lit and salty. We love difference. We embrace God's creation. We hunger and thirst for a world that celebrates our differences. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. That's what lights them up. Every week, we say that confession, and we admit we haven't been all that lit, haven't been all that salty, 
and we come back and we're relit and the salt returns to us for us to go out into the world and be savory. That poor child. <laughs> I've had days like that. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shine. You know them. You are them. Pureness of heart is a thing of beauty. They're the ones who have a vision of God that's brilliant. You ever look at these stained glass windows? I'm pointing to this one right here, and I know it's going to be hard for some of you on this side. You ought to move over. No. Um, that's the window of creation. And as you look up at that window, you see the sun up there. This must be sixth day of creation. And God already created light and dark and evening and morning and so on. But there's something else like Flash Gordon rays coming down to our ancestors, Adama and Eve. They are getting lit. We've been lit since the beginning of creation, but sometimes we put a bushel over the top of our litness. We hide it up. In a world that needs litness, in a world that needs saltiness, blessed are the peacemakers who can come into a situation with host where hostility reigns where people are at odds with one another and show them their common humanity and invite them to the feast of life. They are radiant. They are peacemakers. Jesus says, blessed are the righteous. The ones who get persecuted for telling us the truth publicly about where we really are that tells us maybe our light isn't shining as brightly as it could. They call them prophets. The prophets didn't always have good endings. Now, we had our first reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and most people love 1 Corinthians, right? <laughs> Though I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am nothing. nothing. Paul got lit. Now he got lit in a pretty dramatic way. You all know the story of how he became a, a from an apostle from Saul to Paul. You all know that story. He saw the light and the light blinded him and if it weren't for some kind souls who against all their best judgment reached out to that persecutor of Christians and gave him his sight back, that first Corinthians wouldn't have happened. He got lit. He got lit up. He became the light to his generation. That's what this place is all about. Now, I've been here a long time. I was here before they put those comfortable pew cushions in. <laughs> I was eight. We just moved here from Coffeyville, Kansas. And I lived down here on 17th Street when people with, without much money could live there. It's a walk street. And one day I was, and I wasn't here yet, I was walking down 16th Street and I was wearing a t-shirt that said Dirty Sludge on it. It was a Bardol commercial t-shirt that my cousins back in Coffeyville, and he worked for Bardol, had given me and I really thought was pretty cool. But then I was from Kansas. <laughs> uh, it was easy to be cool in Kansas for me. And when I walked down 16th Street, all of a sudden these guys came out of their homes and started following me to the beach and I got down there, and they beat the living tar out of me. 
and they ripped my shirt off. And I managed to do a wheel, kind of this kind of turn like that to try to protect myself and, and escape. But they tore my shirt, my brand new dirty sludge shirt, the thing that made me cool. And they started calling me sludge. And then they shortened it to slug. And as long as I lived in Hermosa Beach, everybody called me slug. And we moved to Manhattan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was Bob again. And I had a lot of adventures here in Hermosa. The chief among them is my mom came to a PTA meeting. Some of you have heard me say this. And a certain reverend, Mr. Parker, gave the benediction. And my mom was so impressed with the gentleness and kindness and loving way about him that she turned to her neighbor and said, who is that minister? Well, that's Mr. Parker. He's our minister. And we lived, like I said, down the street. And so a city built on a hill was the light in my life. And the next Sunday, I sat right about where you are, B. And I watched the acolytes flow in and out. I watched the ministers flow in and out. I heard the music. I thought I was in heaven. I was getting lit up by the people in this congregation, by the beauty, by the love. And they didn't care that I was dirty sludge. They didn't care that I had a farmer's tan from Coffeyville. They loved me. And they loved my dad, who never came to church. And every Christmas, when Father Parker would hand out oranges and candy canes, he'd always give me two oranges and two candy canes to give my dad. He said, you say hello to your dad for me and wish him a Merry Christmas. That's what being lit all about. And it wasn't just him, it was this congregation. And all you have to do is study the history of what this parish has done. And now I, I, I'm here because I love being here. Uh, you know, when you're a retired clergy, you get a lot of calls, right, Dinah? <laughs> to go help out. And I was at Dinah's place there at St. Michael's for 17 Sundays or events. Um, Thank you very much. That's right. And I'm very happy, not that I, I love St. Michael's, but I'm very happy to be back with you all. And I just hope that you will appreciate the grace of God that flows through this place and through this community and to give thanks for it and to stay lit and to stay salty. Amen. Let us express our unity with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Righteous God, bless our city. Give us things that we need to live together as neighbors. Remove from our hearts anger, envy, and suspicion. Loving God. Righteous God, bless the sick and the suffering. May they find peace and comfort in relation with you. We pray especially for those we name now, aloud, and in our hearts. Loving God, righteous God, bless the dying and the dead and those in mourning. May the dead rest in your heavenly peace, and may those who mourn, who mourn them find comfort in your earthly presence. We pray especially for those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Loving God, in heaven and earth. Hear the prayers of your people and strengthen us to walk in your ways and to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Before we exchange the peace, I would like to invite any members we have uh, who are going on the pilgrimage to the Holy Land to come join us. We have a few members here. I think, come up. You'll help me give the peace. We're going to say a blessing over uh, our members of our team. So if you don't know, we have several members of St. Cross um, and several members of the church where Laurel Coote serves who will be traveling uh, for the next week and a half, almost nearly two weeks to the Holy Land. And um, it's a really a spiritual gift for them, a blessing and we would like to pray over them at this time. So, documentation. All right. So I invite you to lift up your hands to extend them out to our pilgrims as we pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel, especially the pilgrims from St. Cross as they travel to the Holy Land. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. 
as they walk the roads that you walked and pray under the skies to which you looked up to, may they encounter you in a new way to be refreshed and renewed for their life and ministry among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, I ask you. The peace of the Lord. Ready? One, two, three. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. Here we have a peace. All right. I am enjoying the abundant peace of Christ that you are sharing amongst yourselves. Um, so we are coming to the point of uh, the service where you're talking about what we have redubbed signs of Christ's love and community. Um, that was our mission statement is to be a be a people who serve others as a sign of Christ's love. But in recognition of our uh, guest preacher, the Reverend Canon Bob Slug Corner, <laughs> thank you for being here and joining us. I think we might, for today at least, call this the litany of litness and saltiness. That's what I'm calling the announcements today. So. We have much going on as we approach a Lenten season. Uh, and as you think back on this time last year when uh, COVID and Omicron were still uh, affecting a lot of our lives and our programming here, um, we can be uh, rejoicing of the liveliness and the abundance of gifts and activities and programs that we have to share. Uh, so thank you to Reverend Bob and Reverend Dinah for being here to help assist us. Um, the reason why uh, we're missing Reverend Rachel and Reverend Patty is they are on retreat with our new vestry. So according to the bylaws of our church, we found this out during the retreat because we have a new senior warden who's very fastidious about bylaws of the church that at the next Sunday meeting, it needs to be announced who the vestry members are. So, I'm doing that now, fulfilling my obligation. The new vestry members as elected by this body last Sunday at the annual meeting, it's Greg Bellavia, Scott Crowell, Joe Desparte, Jessica Gregg, Lavinia Henley, Larry Johnson, John McBain, Lori Schreier, Jack Tedford, Elizabeth Thompson, and Michelle Weisenberg. Those are the uh, new members of the vestry, and it's a, really, uh, it's a really great gift that we have that they're able to spend this time on retreat, discerning the year ahead, what goals we have, which ways our community is growing, which ways we're being lit, which ways we're getting salty. I just love that we can use that in a different way now. They've recontextualized it. Um, so they're discerning that, and it's deep work. I was with them Friday and Saturday, and I'm back with you here today. And to that end, um, they are also discerning uh, their leadership and goals for a time when our rector, Reverend Rachel, will be on sabbatical for a number of months uh, in the summer and in the fall. So to that end, I would ask or suggest suggesting, I'm not Reverend Rachel, you take this back page of your bulletin, and on here is the ministers, the staff, and the vestry, and this could be a prayer list that you might use in the coming weeks or for Lent, that you would pray for each of the staff members of your church, the clergy, the affiliated clergy, and pray that for them, uh, as we often ask at the end of our announcements, that you give us prayer requests. Uh, I am offering this prayer request that you would hold all of us as we lead and guide in this next year ahead 
uh, through big transitions. Um, and obviously for Reverend Stephen as he's on paternity leave and Holly, keep them in your prayers as well. Just an idea. All right. Here is all of the ways that we are lit and salty as a community. This Wednesday, SAC Lunch, we are being joined by the director of the 1736 House, a ministry started by this congregation uh, as a ministry. Now it's its own organization. And they are coming back here uh, to share with us an update on their services and offerings. So I invite you to come join us Wednesday at noon. Um, also, for the next three weeks, our forum hour will be leaning into Lenten liturgies. If you're curious about what we do during Lent and why, the history and traditions of our services, prayers, and liturgies, uh, please join us at 9 a.m. Uh, then during Lent, we'll be doing Bible study based on the lectionaries. It's kind of, we've been advertising Bible Bites. Well, now Bible Bites gets the big stage of the 9 a.m. forum hour. Come join us in the Guild Room. Email me with any questions. Um, Ash Wednesday is February 22nd. Mark your calendars. We'll have services at 6 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. Uh, I hope to see you there. We are also engaging an, again this year in a Lenten art project. If you are a artist, a painter, a drawer, a cartoonist, a composer, a poet, a writer, uh, please send me an email and join our community as we produce a new uh, Stations of the Cross, and we'll have a service on the Friday, a week before Good Friday, here at St. Cross. We're also joining other Episcopal churches uh, during the Lenten season to do Stations of the Cross. So if you've ever wanted to get out and see some other Episcopal churches, meet some other South Bay Episcopalians, uh, we'll be joining with other churches and doing that every Friday. Pay attention to your bulletin for that schedule. Um, after Lent and you've received your ashes and you're feeling somber and penitent, come back to church for a big rock, blues, spoken word, hip-hop, amazing concert that we've been telling you about will take place on Saturday the 25th. So please join us for that. And the next Sunday will be Faith at Five. Families are invited to our Faith at Five service. Everyone's invited, but it's geared towards families and helping families have conversations about faith at home. On March 11th, we'll, have, we'll be participating in the Hermosa Beach St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, so dress up in green. We'll have big green truck. You dress up your strollers and your wagons and your bikes with green streamers and wear uh, all sorts of green outfits and walk with us in the parade. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we will be having baptisms on Easter morning. It's one of my favorite baptism days because uh, we get to sprinkle the whole congregation as we walk around with the asp aspergillium. It's a fancy Episcopal word, and I get into it, so I'll just warn you right now. Uh, if you're sitting next to me and you see me coming up your aisle, uh, hold up your hymnal to protect yourself, or you will be baptized. Um, Laundry Love is also happening. We do it every last Wednesday of the month, and it will be on Ash Wednesday. So, uh, you know, if you have the smudge on your forehead, just you got to explain that to people that it's not going to get in their laundry. Uh, offering envelopes are still in the back. Please pick those up. And uh, as I said, we, we, uh, we invite your prayer requests during this season uh, we, it's one of the ways we can keep in contact with you. Fill out a prayer card. Put it in the offering plate. Send us an email. Give us a call, a text. Uh, sign into Compline and send it in the chat. Um, we love to be in prayer with you and holding you up. We are praying for you. Uh, and sharing your requests invites us deeper into that shared prayer life. Um, and with that being said, uh, I'm announcing... Uh, with great sadness, but also assurance of our eternal hope, the passing of Maureen Husted uh, passed away, a longtime member, uh, very involved, and also um, Al Robson passed away this weekend. So please hold uh, Maureen's husband, Rolf, and her children and grandchildren as they mourn and plan the services, and also Al's children and grandchildren. Uh, please hold them in your prayers during this tender time and thin place of grief and mourning.
Thank you. And God will make straight your path. Honor the Lord with your whole being and offer as sacrifice the first fruits of all your produce.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say... Praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, do this for remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. On the night before he died for us, you know, now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek peace. Alleluia. 
Come when you are fearful to be made new in love. Come when you are doubtful to be made strong in faith. Come when you are regretful and be made whole. Come old and young, there is room for all.
You have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God the Father who led the wise men by the shining star to find the Christ, the light of light, so also lead you in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God the Son who turned water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana so also transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. May God, the Holy Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the Jordan, so also pour out gifts on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.